Ukraine takes delivery of the British Terrahawk Paladin, a gloriously overarmed gun truck that looks like somebody strapped a medieval armory to a flatbed and called it a procurement decision. If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you'll remember I broke down the Gravehawk a while back, another system the Brits sent to Ukraine. Gravehawk is the long arm with guided missiles. Terrahawk Paladin is the angry bartender with a Bushmaster 30mm cannon who handles problems up close. Same family, same threat set, completely different way of killing drones. Today we're going to break down what Terrahawk Paladin is, how it works, and how it actually differs from Gravehawk. Oh, and where it fits inside Ukraine's layered air defense. Hey friends, Wes here, multi-branch veteran and we just can't seem to break away from the British over the last few videos. Although, as an American with Irish heritage, breaking away from the British is kind of a known problem. Also, can we pause to appreciate how bad the UK's naming conventions are? The Gravehawk. The Terrahawk. Meanwhile, we have names like The Patriot. Yes, sir. Rangers lead the way, sir. All right, let's get into it. To understand Terrahawk Paladin, you have to go back to the sea. MSI Defense Systems spent decades building naval close-in weapon systems, or SeaWiz, under the Seahawk family. Those are the little turrets you see on warships that track fast-moving incoming threats and obliterate them in seconds. On a ship, you do not have the time for committee meetings. You see something, you identify it, you track it, and you fire within seconds. Automation is everything. When kamikaze drones and loitering munitions started appearing in large numbers, MSI did something smart. They looked at their existing naval turret tech and said, why don't we drag this thing ashore and aim it at drones instead of sea-skimming missiles? That thinking gave birth to Terrahawk, and then the evolved version, Terrahawk Paladin. Now, the name Paladin is deliberate. It is supposed to be the knight standing guard over a high-value target on land. None shall pass. What? None shall pass. Power plants, depots, airfields, command posts. The idea is not to create a roaming air defense system. The idea is to create a static guardian that you can drop where it's needed and wire it into the local network. So what did Ukraine receive? Well, the Terrahawk Paladin is a self-contained short-range anti-aircraft gun designed from the ground up to kill drones, FPVs, low-flying UAVs, and similar aerial threats. The heart of the system is a standard palletized platform. You move it around on a truck, a MAN HX in Ukraine's case, and then unload it with a crane where you want it to go into action. That is the first big difference from Gravehawk. Gravehawk is a true self-propelled system. You can drive it, shoot, and then move again. Terrahawk Paladin is more like a turret in a box. You position it, you hook it up, and it sits there guarding one place. On that pallet, you have three main elements. At one end is the combat module, the Terrahawk LW turret that carries the 30mm Mark 44 Bushmaster II automatic cannon that Ukraine received. The mount can also be configured for a 40mm if a customer wants a bigger punch, but Key's version is the 30. In the middle, you have the support hardware, cables, power, electronics, and then at the other end, you have the sensor masts. One mast carries the sky control radar from Polish company Advanced Protection Systems. It uses four small ESA panels to provide a full 360 degree view. Large aircraft can be detected out past 30 kilometers, low flying helicopters at around 10 kilometers, and small drones in the two to three kilometer bracket, depending on conditions. Right next to that is the Satos Electro Optical Station from MSI. That package gives you day cameras, thermal imaging, and a laser rangefinder. In other words, the radar spots the target and cues the optic. Then the optic can positively track and refine the fire solution. All of this plugs into a digital fire control system that ties radar, optics, and the gun into one loop. Two operators sit at remote controls up to 100 meters away, under cover, and they control the system. They can let it run in semi-automatic mode where it suggests engagements or more automatic modes depending on how the Ukrainians configure the rules of engagement. When it fires, that Mark 44 Bushmaster II spits out 30 millimeter rounds at selectable rates of about 100 or 200 rounds per minute and over 1,000 meters per second. 
It uses a dual feed system, so you can load two different ammunition types and switch between them instantly. One of those types can be programmable airburst, which is what you want when you're going up against small drones that don't offer much target area. Effective range is about 2.5 to 3 kilometers against the kind of drones it was built to kill. So, Terrahawk Paladin is a short range, high precision, gun based drone killer that you plant near something important. Gravehawk, by contrast, is uh, built around missiles, not guns. It can reach further, it can engage targets with guided interceptors, and it's more mobile. But each shot costs far more than a 30mm burst. Now let's talk strengths and weaknesses because this thing is useful, but it's not magic. On the plus side, Terrahawk Paladin does a few things extremely well. First, it is purpose-built for drones. The radar is tailored to small cross-section targets. The optics are designed to track them. The gun has programmable rounds suited to shredding quadcopters and, and kamikaze drones in a small volume of air. Second, it's cheap per engagement. A string of 30mm rounds, even fancy programmable ones, costs far less than a surface-to-air missile. When you are shooting at $10,000 shot heads, you want to avoid burning through million-dollar rockets. Third, it is digital and networkable. The fire control system can integrate into site defense networks or feed and receive tracks from other sensors and be a servant into a larger command picture. Now that matters in Ukraine where drones, radar, and guns are increasingly tied into unified air defense grids. Fourth, it is remotely operated. The crew is not sitting under the mast like it's 1943. They are displaced, under cover, connected by cables. That improves survivability against counter-battery fire or loitering munitions, hunting for the radar. But there are limitations. The first is mobility. Terrahawk Paladin cannot drive itself. You need a truck with a crane or a boom to deploy and recover it. Once it's on the pad, it is there on the pad. If the enemy starts hunting that location with artillery, you do not just step on the gas and relocate. You have to tear down the whole thing. In that sense, it's very much like the Patriot, which is kind of a pain in the ass to pick up and move. The second is range. Two to three kilometers is fine for last line air defense, but it means you have to put it very close to the thing you are defending. That is good for infrastructure protection, but not for covering maneuver forces spread out over a wide area. And the third is vulnerability. The system is not armored like a tank. If a Russian loitering munition or a Lancet spots it, there are no real self-defense options beyond shooting that drone before it gets close. Now, all of this means Terrahawk Paladin is best understood as a point defense system. Put it near power plants, depots, bridges, staging areas, and let it sit there as the last gun layer against incoming drones. Now, Gravehawk, as I mentioned, can move with the troops or cover shifting sectors. So why is Ukraine happy to receive a static pallet with a gun on it? when they are already operating things like Gepard and various other anti-drone guns. Because the air war over Ukraine has shifted into a numbers game. Russia is launching drones from long range, sending them at low altitude to stress Ukraine's air defenses. At the same time, FPV drones and recon drones are saturating the front line. Missile systems need help. Terrahawk Paladin gives Ukraine another tool in the layered air defense game. It can sit at a power station that has already been hit 10 times and act as the final filter. It can cover fuel depots that Russia loves to hit. It can protect logistics hubs that cannot afford to waste Iris T missiles on every cheap flying scooter that comes near. Because it uses standard NATO 30mm ammunition, including programmable airbursts, like I said, it also plugs neatly into Ukraine's growing Western logistics chain. And the training pipeline is short. Ukrainians have already learned to operate digital fire control systems on other Western platforms. Moving to Terrahawk consoles is not a giant leap. So it's not flashy. It's not going to dominate the headlines like Patriots or F-16s, but it relieves pressure on those systems by handling the low-end targets cost-effectively. Patriot kills 10% of the threats that will kill a city. Terrahawk kills the 90% of threats that will kill your transformers. Both matter, but Terrahawk has more bang for the buck. That's it for today, my friends. Subscribing really is the best free way to support this channel and the videos I make. I'm building a real community here, not just subscribers, but a group of people who are passionate 
about Ukraine's eventual victory and people who believe that we are strongest when we honor our alliances and stand up to authoritarians. Subscribing really is the best free way to dip your toes in that community. So consider it. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.